what would be the next MySQL version? That's a very good question, right? So, um, it, it is currently eight, and they ship very interesting new features in every point release. What will be the next major release? Will it be nine, ten? Like MariaDB jumped to eleven. In fact, it went from five, five to ten, <laughs> and then eleven. So there's lots of jumping. So what will be the next one? Who knows? Maybe they'll call it twenty twenty three. I don't know. <laughs> oh. We're here. Yes. All right, let's get started because um, we're going to run out of time. <laughs> okay, I just want to thank everyone uh, coming in today. And it's my first time in, in Singapore, first time in Posegia. So thank you for inviting and hosting our session today with Colin and with his uh, uh, previous um, <clears throat> talks over here. Um, this talk, I just want to remind, we've been actually handling this talk for almost 10 years with Colin and switching and, and um, sharing our um, experiences. So we'll, we'll start from um, the beginning, inception of MySQL. So some, some people know about where the MySQL came from, but um, I actually always uh, try to remind, remind, reminder have, um, have uh, where this all started. So basically, uh, Monty actually had an idea of writing this uh, code and um, and actually started a long time ago. Now it's 28 years. And um, and um, there's a little bit of a history about that, uh, but where it came ended up in, in Oracle. And um, and that's where um, the background of um, the MySQL is. Yeah, and to be clear, um, you know, InnoDB is still very much the storage engine of choice, even though back then we called that InnoDB Friday, it was a very dark day for us at MySQL. We subsequently went out to acquire this storage engine called Falcon, which is now dead. And BDB was also part of Sleepy Cat. Uh, BDB as an engine doesn't exist any longer, but uh, it was. So actually MySQL has evolved a lot in the last basically three decades. Yes. So, um, there are some stakeholders that uh, we should know about MySQL. Um, after the Monty's uh, inception, there's in 2008, uh, Percona actually took um, the fork of MySQL. As of today, it's a still um, a live database and supported database that's uh, based on MySQL. And there were some other distribution that didn't last long, uh, but in um, Oracle actually holds the both versions of uh, community and the enterprise editions of, of MySQL as of today. Anything on this? Oh yeah, so in theory, the Maria engine was always being developed. It was called the, it was called the Maria, now it's called Aria, it was renamed actually. So yeah, before acquisition, there was an idea that maybe the Maria engine needs to continue development, but the company actually only got started much later, like um, actually in the summer, in Mallorca of uh, 2009 was when a bunch of us decided to go and set up a new company. Unfortunately, I didn't make the first meeting because I got the chicken pox. So always something happens. Okay, so we want to fast forward because we haven't been doing this, uh, this type of talk for the last three years. And we recently came back on the Y events and uh, Colin actually presented in the last uh, FOSDEM in, in February. So um, I'll let him actually run this one. Yeah, so um, MySQL sold to Oracle for, oh, sorry, to Sun for a billion dollars. Sun sold to Oracle for, I don't know, seven maybe. And uh, MariaDB actually went public last December, December 19th. Uh, it's trading as Maria MRDB. I'm sure if you go look for the stock price now, you'd, you'd probably laugh. <laughs> it's, a, it's a sad situation for whoever's still holding the bags, as they say in crypto. <clears throat> but this is actually on the stock exchange. A um, lot of uh, rapid releases now is the plan with um, long-term support releases. So if, my advice to you is to actually use a long-term support release if you're going to deploy not actually deploy with rapid releases that you have to upgrade every every year because I don't think anyone in production does that. Percona has also rebranded. Uh, I think they're beyond just the logo, they've rebranded in general as a, as a company and what they offer. So that's also very exciting. Oracle makes so many amazing changes into, into small releases of MySQL. You consider them minor releases, but they're actually all major. They include nice new bugs. Um, and nice new features, so it's a huge bonus. I highly recommend you read the release notes carefully. Uh, Amazon RDS ditched DRBD for semi-synchronous replication, so it's actually much faster if you use 
multi-AZ. Anybody here use Amazon RDS? Okay, so if you're using RDS, you'll actually notice uh, much more speed improvements for inserts, for example. Uh, while Amazon finally migrated to uh, semi-synchronous replication, Facebook decided we'll go one step further. We'll actually do something called RAF-based replication. And they've actually got RAF protocol built inside as a replication layer. So actually now there are four types of replication in the MySQL world. Asynchronous, semi-synchronous, virtually fully synchronous, and RAF-based. Except if you want to try the RAF stuff, you have to compile software uh, from the Facebook tree, which I'm sure many of you here at FOSS Asia can do. So um, after that, uh, fast forwarding to three years, the latest news started coming out. And this is the very um, latest um, update from the MySQL versioning, uh, which was announced in the MySQL Summit, like in Japan, maybe a month ago. And uh, they started getting into long-term release support. Uh, the reason is they are going to be staying in version 8 for a while. And uh, version 8, as uh, Colin mentioned, uh, minor versions are actually um, happening as like a major feature changes. And uh, we'll talk about that a little bit uh, later, but this is the latest long-term support that will allow uh, MySQL to uh, continue on this version. Anything on this? No, I think okay. it's really important. It's for the support lifecycle. Yes, support lifecycle. Okay, um, this is a nice graph that we like to share that Daniel actually put together. Um, it's in GitHub. There's a link over here. And actually, this uh, poses of uh, where the MySQL came from. There's also a little uh, earlier graph that we removed, uh, version 3 and uh, etc. So that's the branching tree, how it's being actually um, handled until today. So we are actually going through that uh, cycle of events. And uh, as you can see, MariaDB is, is going through uh, the, the minor versions of 10, and, and right now it's in 1.6. Yeah, like rapid releases, right? So you're actually getting several a year. So pick the LTSs. I mean, play with the short-term releases because they've got nice new features, but pick the LTSs. Okay. So um, this actually is a good sign that uh, both uh, MariaDB and MySQL versions are being um, deployed and new versions and the features being added. That actually adds to the community having new features. So important uh, update over here in 5.7 if anyone is actually using 5.7 anyone in 5.7 some customers <laughs> there'll be some customers always um, uh, end of life is uh, in october this year so there will be no official support unless there is a uh, special case uh, as of today this is the date that mysql oracle will no longer be supporting so um, there's a lot of things going on, but um, maybe you want to look up uh, some of the other presentations we've done in the past. There's one from me. I've done a bunch of uh, runs in 2019 for the upgrade in MySQL to get uh, everyone prepared for the ne next three years. But apparently there are still people using 5.7, uh, but it is time to upgrade. So anything on the any features? Okay. I can just um, you know run the MySQL 8. It covers uh, both database administration and uh, development features. Um, from the database side, there are major changes in 8 compared to 5.7, um, including security and the uh, native data dictionary. Uh, some of the performance improvements were bound to um, the original structure of MySQL. So those are being um, basically changed and, and rewritten to get more optimization in the database. There's also on the uh, software development side, there's a bunch of things uh, which the highlights of, of getting the developers more embedded in the MySQL. Uh, MySQL shell is one of them and the JSON support is the other one. And uh, let's quick let's switch to that and MariaDB. Yeah, and MariaDB has actually got lots of those features that MySQL has, but also can maybe delve out of what MySQL can support, right? So an Oracle PL SQL layer, uh, so you can migrate Oracle, most Oracle apps to uh, MariaDB is, of course, something that you'd never see MySQL do, probably. Things like DML only, flashback, uh, many interesting things. So dynamic columns, 
uh, is also, I'd say, unique. Actually, I, I try to keep this slide to only unique things that you'd find in MariaDB. Um, proxy protocol support is maybe not so unique as Pacona server has it, but standard MySQL doesn't. So um, slides will be available, of course, so do check them out. It's just, we will upload the slides, so we'll have all that. Um, fast forwarding to MySQL 8 releases. So we have actually uh, talked about the 5.7 to 8 and um, the bug fixes and all that. All the minor versions of, of MySQL actually now includes a new features and it's actually like a new version. And uh, the latest one as of March uh, included these, these two big changes with the UnoDB replica set, cluster and cluster sets that was um, uh, presented in recently uh, by Oracle. And I'm sure there's some talks about that. Also, the another feature that's important, instant ad drop. This is a, an important um, production operational issue that if you have large keys to or columns to in, add or drop, that might be uh, operationally difficult to handle in some cases on active systems. So check this out uh, right now. It was introduced in 31, but in 32, it is recommended that they found some issues. It is recommended to only run on, on 32, so you have to go on the latest uh, and the greatest release of MySQL. Anything on Ado? Yeah, so you'll find bugs even in point releases, and this is maybe one of the biggest changes you'd see in MySQL 8 is to actually pay attention to point releases, release notes. Important uh, update on that. Uh, so, um, Percona is also following this trend of um, getting these updates. Percona server is uh, is actually following the, the minor versions slightly later than the Oracle. Um, this one of the major uh, reasons, if Colin agrees, is the is the backup extra backup only works on the latest version of MySQL that uh, Percona releases. So if you are on open source and using extra, extra backup as the backup utility, you are actually need to be following the Percona server to be releasing the latest support for that version. And uh, that's how the... Yeah, yeah, it's because extra backup is tied to the InuDB version, which is why actually Maria backup exists now as well, because MariaDB forked extra backup for that sole purpose. Okay. And that's a good uh, uh, highlight. And um, so there's a bunch of um, updates on the uh, Percona server that's also coming out and, and following, which is uh, which is in addition to um, MySQL Oracle MySQL Community Edition. So we get some of these features. Some of them include uh, the storage engines and. Um, uh, Vault and stuff like that, so you can check those out. And there's an advantage of using uh, Percona's open source version versus um, the community edition that Oracle provides. I think one thing that we haven't mentioned over here is these uh, minor versions of MySQL is, is one way, so there's no rolling back to the previous version. And uh, Colin will say something. No, it's true. It's uh, it's actually a problem. So if you're planning your upgrades, know that downgrades are hard. So take backups. <laughs> yeah, um, this is a, very, a little bit different in the MariaDB world, where um, forward and backward compatibility is actually still kind of primed. Yeah, so this is important reminder. Anyone is thinking of upgrading, you need to plan how you actually circle back into the old version or failover. If your data set is, is, is large, if your transactions are high, this is, this is a difficult uh, task that you need to handle properly. Okay. So we've, um, there is a, the, something that uh, we've compiled uh, in the past, uh, comparing the Enterprise Edition versus Percona Server versus the Community Edition. So th these are the updates that uh, the Percona Server provides. You don't need to pay for the Enterprise Edition, but you can actually still use the uh, Percona server to get some of the features if you're using. And um, there are some, um, some things to check out. Okay. All right. So MyRox is a nice little storage engine built on top of RocksDB, um, basically uh, developed by Facebook. 
In fact, um, Facebook is mostly running on MyRox now. They've migrated nearly all their entire fleet to MySQL 8 with MyRox and this Raft um, replication layer. So the reason for them is it's because it's much better from a compression standpoint. So compressed InnoDB is um, not as efficient or space efficient. And uh, they also want write efficiency. So in terms of uh, tr translation, this is um, hardware savings for you, right? And it turns out that if you are in the cloud, for already fairly long time, um, MyRox has been enabled in the MariaDB distribution of Amazon RDS. So maybe it's a bit of an underrated feature of um, MariaDB. But um, it, you know, it, it's, it's an engine that probably could use a lot more marketing uh, besides the fact that, oh yeah, Facebook's migrated to it and on nearly its entire fleet. So uh, I, I think both uh, Pacona and uh, MariaDB probably need to spend a bit more time on it. Uh, next slide, I guess. And then this is um, how um, the MyRox actually um, handles. Like, uh, like Colin said, uh, it's mostly um, hardware uh, and the storage savings. It helps on the compaction and the compression of the data. And that's where uh, what from our uh, friends at Facebook saying that they were running out of space because of the, the data that's being used. And this helped them uh, save storage and the storage needs that needs planning in advance. Okay. So popularity on MySQL is going very high, still strong in the community. We're still uh, number two. And uh, considering Oracle, I don't know if it's like a Oracle MySQL is not just Oracle, Oracle, so, so that's the ranking, okay. So. And this jump is the snowflake, by the way. <laughs> so that's an, an interesting highlight. That's how the uh, snowflake actually made that jump over there. Okay, some, um, some talks about the proxy and proxies. Yeah, I expect that if you run at scale, you probably will end up needing to use some kind of proxy, be it HA proxy, proxy SQL, router. MySQL router is actually default configuration literally for your InnoDB clusters. Um, proxy SQL or HA proxy uh, for your Percona HDB clusters or your Galera clusters. And then, of, of course, MariaDB also ships something called MaxScale. Uh, but that's a, under a business source license, so not very, not as popular as you'd expect because you've got to pay for um, the service behind it. But it's a good good proxy, just badly licensed. So the the long story short, use a proxy if you're using MySQL. So that's the basically the best practice to put a proxy in front of a MySQL servers. And uh, there's a lot of talks and um, a lot of uh, content blogs about this. If you haven't um, used, heard about any proxy, uh, check those out. And um, we talked about the proxy SQL um, is the most popular and, and common proxy for MySQL and the MariaDB's MaxScale is competing product, which uh, the later versions are actually more licensed. And uh, so the proxy vision is, uh, is basically put proxy in front of your uh, database server, it take advantage of, of the um, read-write splitting, and um, query routing and some other uh, features that it has. Um, Oracle has a similar uh, proxy vision. Any words on this? Yeah, so Oracle's router, similar vision. He, and the reason you get router, um, proxy SQL and uh, H, uh, versus HA proxy is the fact that one's a level seven proxy, understands SQL protocol, one's like level four, just TCP IP. So a little different from that standpoint. Plenty of HA solutions out there today. Um, we've already talked about the group replication in UB cluster. You've got Galera, of course. Go to a Galera talk. Clouds, plenty, plenty in the cloud. Maybe Vitesse. Yes, uh, Vitesse does support uh, sharding. So we'll just go through the, the tooling. There's a bunch of tools available, open source tools that you can actually uh, orchestrate uh, your proxy in MySQL ecosystem. And um, some of those are, are highly used in, in the day-to-day -day operations of, uh, and one of that stands out is a Paracona toolkit. Uh, if you haven't heard about it, please check it out. Um, the trending topics will run very fast on this one. There's operators, so of course, in the, in the Kubernetes world, we got a lot of operators, and the MySQL is, is leading, and there's a Vitesse for sharding framework for, for MySQL, uh, group replication Gorilla for HA solutions, and there's other bunch of uh, uh, tools and, and utilities that allows this ecosystem to be run. And um, 
I will go through real quick in the operators. There's um, known operators as Paracona Kubernetes operators runs for the extra DB cluster. So it allows to run a uh, database in, in data on Kubernetes for uh, stateful workloads. Prince Labs has its own and Vitesse actually runs an operator. And um, also MySQL, uh, Oracle MySQL operator came out within the realm of a group replication uh, to handle data on Kubernetes. And um, we can skip those. And um, we have a bunch of books available uh, in the MySQL. And um, one of them is um, the one that I co-authored with Sveta. Tomorrow we will have a session about this and um, hopefully have a book signing also. Thank you.